Hi there! Previously we had an overview of machine learning monitoring metrics. Now let's discuss key considerations for machine learning monitoring setup. We are going to discuss four points. First is matching machine learning monitoring setup with the use case. Then considering model retraining cadence, choosing the right reference dataset and custom metrics, of course. So what impacts the machine learning monitoring setup? One of the most important factors is machine learning service implementation. There are many different ways how you can deploy your machine learning model in production. It can be a real-time production service operating under a high load, or it can be batch airflow deck. It even may be an ad hoc Python script, which you run from Jupyter Notebook, for example, for an ad hoc marketing campaign. So it makes sense to match the complexity of deployment and operations for monitoring with the complexity of deployment and operations of your machine learning production service. It doesn't really make sense to have quite heavy monitoring service if you use it for your ad hoc Python script, right? So this is pretty important thing. Second things are feedback loop and environment stability, because both factors can influence the cadence of metrics calculations. You might have immediate or delayed feedback. You might have very stable environment or very fast changing. And in this case, you might decide whether you want to have a real-time metrics calculations, or maybe you prefer to calculate your metric in a daily basis, or maybe on an hourly basis, weekly basis, whatever suits you most. And finally, service criticality is also a very important factor because you need to match the monitoring with the criticality of your case. What is the business cost of the sudden quality drop of the model? What is the cost for each individual error? All those questions can help you to figure out what are the most important risks you want to mitigate with help of monitoring and decide on the scope of metrics and monitoring setup in general. Less important topic to discuss is model retraining approach, because quite often engineers tend to bind the retraining process with the monitoring. It does make a lot of sense, because during the monitoring you measure a lot of quality metrics, data quality metrics, and, well, even data drift. And you might to set up the automated action, like model retraining, depend on the alerts you received from different metrics. For example, you might want to run retraining when the model's quality drop. But be careful here, because if you have very well automated retraining process together with the testing and deployment, you totally can't do that. But in many cases, there might be quite a lot of things which prevent you from the automated retraining. For example, you might need to run your models against quite heavy approval process, or maybe there are some regulations which prevent you from the automatic deployment. Maybe the testing procedure is quite tough and manual, so in this case you might want to totally split the monitoring from retraining. As usual, it's very case specific. Imagine a situation where you have quite a lot of production machine learning models. Very lucky, right? And if each model uses quite a lot of different features, numerical, categorical, date time, or maybe some unstructured features like text features, maybe some images or videos, and you need to set up data quality and data integrity monitoring, oh, it even sounds tough because you need to come up with the metrics for each feature, right? And you need to come up with the metric conditions on which to raise an alert and when manually, it does take quite a lot of time. Instead of doing this, you might use the following strategy. Maybe it's much easier for you to create a reference dataset where you are happy with the model performance and data quality. And every time you receive a new batch of data, you might compare this new batch of data with your reference dataset and decide whether the differences are too drastic. In this case, you will need to invest quite a lot of time into selecting and curating this reference dataset, because in this case it is as important as choosing the right metrics, right? And there are quite a lot of options you might also consider. First of all, you need to make sure that your reference dataset is representative. So it should include some expected data patterns 
and maybe you even might want to add some corner cases. Actually, you can have one reference dataset, a single one, which you use for um, many different metrics, or you might have different reference datasets. For example, one reference dataset, which you use for data quality and data drift calculation, and the other reference dataset, which you use for model performance calculation. Or maybe you might use uh, the moving window strategy. For example, recreate your reference dataset using some automated functions daily or maybe weekly. It's also a strategy. For data drift calculation, you might have um, different reference data sets, for example, one uh, for the daily calculations and one for weekly calculations. For example, if you have strong seasonality. So it's quite open and you might make use of different reference data sets based on the problem statement and known properties of your data. Quite often, reference dataset serves as a baseline for distribution comparison, and in this case, consider having many different datasets for different data types. Finally, I want to quickly touch a point of custom machine learning monitoring metrics. In many cases, you might want to add a few additional custom metrics uh, in addition to standard ones. For example, not limit yourself to the uh, area under receiving operating curve or maybe accuracy score, but also create some more custom metrics which make sense for your problem statement. It may be some use case specific quality metrics, like for example lift at 10%, which is quite popular in telecommunications for churn prediction. In this case, instead of measuring the precision of your model, you kind of compare the precision of your model the, or the ranking, the quality of the ranking of your model on the top, in this case 10% of predictions, uh, against the precision on random predictions. Right? So it's kind of this relative score. You can come up with some nice heuristics. Uh, that correlates with the quality of your model. For example, instead of or together with quality metrics, you might measure something like share of predictions which are higher than some specific threshold. You might add up some business quality metrics or KPIs, for example, like estimated savings. Or if you monitor for data drift, you can even use some custom drift detection methods. No need to limit yourself to statistical tests, especially if it's totally non-relevant for your problem statement. You can use in any distance function to compare your distributions. So feel free to create something which makes sense to your problem statement and to your data properties. Let's sum up. There are quite a lot of considerations we need to take into account while designing monitoring setup for machine learning models. First of all, you need to match machine learning monitoring setup to the use case. In terms of complexity, in terms of metrics calculation schedule, in terms of the amount of alerts, all of this should be reasonable. You might want to consider binding your retraining with the monitoring, or maybe it's not relevant for you, it's all very case specific. Instead of selecting the right thresholds for each matrix, you might use the strategy with curating the reference dataset and using the strategy uh, like comparing the properties of the new batches of data with your reference dataset. And you might have many reference datasets. And finally, you don't have to limit yourself to standard quality or performance metrics, but you can come up with any custom metrics which make sense for your problem statement. Make sure your monitoring setup really solves your problem and help you to figure out what's going on with your production model and keep them safe and sound. Our next topic will be machine learning monitoring architecture.